Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with Maths and Stats uh, and this video, another video in our series of videos dealing with calculus and limits and in particular epsilon delta proofs uh, is going to show how we can use an epsilon delta proof to show that the limit of the square root of x as x tends to 4 is in fact equal to 2. Just keep in mind, keep in, mind in relation to this particular function, uh, the square root of x, that it's not defined on the full range of real numbers and in fact it's only defined for x greater than or equal to zero okay but with that said uh, what we need to show is let's just recall our definition of an, an epsilon delta definition of a limit so let's recall okay? and what it says it says that for each and every epsilon greater than zero <coughs> excuse me there needs to exist a delta greater than zero such that for each and every x satisfying the condition, excuse me, I have a bit of a cough here. <coughs> excuse me. For each and every x satisfying the condition that zero is less than the absolute value of x minus a, which is less than delta, that that needs to imply that the absolute value of the function minus the limit is less than epsilon. In this case, so in this case, we need to show that for each and every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that for each and every x satisfying the condition, that zero is less than x minus, where, where, are we, where, where are we restricting our x to? Well, it says x tends to four, so minus four, less than delta, needs to imply that f of x, the absolute value of f of x, which is the square root of x, minus the limit, which is two, needs to be less than epsilon. So just recall as well that from an implication perspective that this is our conclusion, our conclusion, okay, and that this thing over here is our premise, right? And what we're going to do is we're just going to look at the conclusion because the conclusion has our x defined in terms of epsilons. So we could manipulate or deduce from this particular fact something that looks like this. Well, then what we'll have done is we'll have bound our x minus four, the absolute value of x minus four, to be some multiple of the epsilon. We can then choose that to be our appropriate delta. Okay? So in anticipation, in anticipation okay, of finding an appropriate delta, delta, let's consider, let's consider what we're going to consider is the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. That is, what we're considering is the absolute value of the square root of x minus 2 is less than epsilon. Well, what we do know from this is that what must be true, this implies, we need to get rid of this square root of x. Yeah. So if we multiply the top by, let's say, the square root of x plus 2, that would actually reduce this down for us. Yeah? And actually, let's do that. So this is the same as the absolute value of x minus 2 multiplied by the absolute value of x plus 2 over the absolute value of x plus 2, which, well, this is just 1 times this, so this must still be less than less than epsilon. Now, when we multiply out the brackets here, uh, what we end up on the top, this is the same as the absolute value of x minus 2 times the absolute value of x plus 2. Don't forget the absolute value of a product is the same as the product of the individual absolute values, all over all over the absolute value of the square root of x plus 2 must be less than epsilon, which implies that when we multiply with these brackets, we're going to end up with x minus 4. So the absolute value of x minus 4 over the absolute value of x plus 2 must be less than epsilon. So we're nearly there. We have our premise. Okay? There it is here. Well, we have what's bounded within our premise here. Okay? So we could say that the absolute value of x minus 4 is less than this quantity times epsilon. Okay? But we just, want it, we just want our delta to be an actual number. Okay? We don't want it to be determined by a particular x value and any x value. Okay? We want it to be a specific number. So we need to figure out, can we find some number that bounds this particular quantity here, the square root of x plus 2? And we can. Let's just restrict x minus 4. Let's get very, very close to 4. Let's say within one unit of 4. So let's restrict x minus 4 to be within one unit. And let's see what that says about this particular quantity here. So let's restrict, let's restrict the absolute value of the square root of x. Oh, let's restrict the absolute value of x minus 4 
to be less than one. In other words, what I'm really saying is that delta is equal to one. So let's see what happens within one unit of four. Okay. Well, what does this imply? This implies that minus one is less than x minus four, which is less than one from our definitions of absolute values. Uh, we'd like to get and see something like the square root of x plus two. So let's see, because we want to know what's happening to the square root of x plus two. So what does this imply? This implies, well, let's get rid of the four. So let's add four across here. So this implies that three is less than x, which is less than five. Uh, and let's get the square root across. So this implies that the square root of three must be less than the square root of x, which is less than the square root of five. And then let's add two on right across. So this implies that the square root of three plus two must be less than the square root of x plus two, which must be less than the square root of five plus two. So effectively now what we've done is we know we've actually bounded, we've bounded this number here below and above. So from here now we now know, yeah, the left-hand side, we now know that the left-hand side of this particular inequality, okay, so therefore, okay, we must have that the absolute value of x minus, we're still trying to find this delta, x minus